An effective leader is alive with spirit and enthusiasm. That's Rose has passion during the time she's in office. That's Rose. Makes the meeting useful, timely, and educational. That's Rose. Ask the members what they need, expect from the chapter. Rose does that well. Meets the needs of the members. She does. She senses a lot of information if you just read it. Set an example that others may choose to follow. I'm sure Rose comes from big shoes, not necessarily size-wise, but speaking of her experience. That doesn't mean you can't lead. That means you're going to take a little bit longer to get there, but you will arrive. By displaying all of these qualities, you're setting an example of being a role model. Leaders are visionaries. Adapt your leadership skills to the path of the future. Recognize need for effective succession planning through encouragement, and education, and sharing your knowledge. I just mentioned that mm -hmm. early. Share the knowledge and experience you've had. Encourage people to step up and definitely tell them about the educational benefits that are out there to help them, to help them through their career path and not only that, their officership with IHA. This is a circle of leadership. Make commitment to leadership continuity. Assess the present. Assess the future. Establish a succession planning program. It doesn't have to be as in-depth as mine, but do something like that. Identify and develop individual talent. And evaluate and reward. Definitely you have individual talent. I work with five different supervisors who did not want to be called assistant director of housekeeping. They wanted to be supervisors that share the responsibility. So if I have to slap one, I slap all five for anything that went wrong. But what is good about them is I'm taking their talents, their individual talents, and using them to the best of my ability. And it works. Because they're also shadowing each other to understand what the other has to do we give them a certain levels of uh, responsibility, but yet everybody comes together. When I am on a trip, they come together and they work cohesively to get the job done. It's amazing because at first I thought this wouldn't work, but I'm glad they, they suggested it. I didn't work that plan. They suggested, why don't we all work together? And get it done. So with five, it becomes very successful in my office. So leadership is all this. It's called the circle of leadership. We need to have all of these attributes figured out in our office so that we can share that with our staff. So the steps have a strategic goal setting, lay a solid foundation, keep your eyes on the horizon, be forward thinking, Know where you are going. Many times we know what we have to do, but we don't know where we're supposed to go. How do you want to get there? That's interesting because sometimes we don't know how to get there. We know what the end result is. Who will take us there? Know all these questions before you set your goals. Do you know the vision and mission of your company? Do you know the vision and mission of our chapter? If you have it, best you look. Best, what is it, Rose? Best of my, our best to me, the best of me to my association, and the best of my association to me. It's on your flyers that she sent us. That's our mission for about each other. What are the goals you want to attain strategically? Tactical will allow us to reach those goals. Who will take us? Maybe the current members, maybe a future member will take us there. But know these things before you can leave. Lay a solid foundation. Communication is always at the top. Process, requirements, and benefits. To do this, you must lay a solid foundation for your current and future members. Succession planning ensures that a member has been developed and is ready to take the step to a leadership role. An important component of this 
as we well know, is communication. We have to maintain focus on the end goal and simplify the process, make it simple. So succession planning after I've read the qualities of a good leader is having the right people in the right place at the right time. An ongoing process of identifying and developing future leaders an opportunity to create standards for qualifications and competencies for future leaders, providing understanding to members of the potential leadership paths available and developed needs. There's a lot of information at these chapter meetings. If you just listen, you'll hear all the training that's going on, whether it's community wide or within our chapter. Go on the website. Start Googling with some of our members. You'll be surprised how much information is transmitted on our website. People asking questions, wanting to know this and that. You can share the same questions too, or answers with them. That's what we have, but it's only as good as if you use it. The purpose and need for succession planning, know what the purpose is. Time frame, there's always a time frame and commitment. Resources available, the vision and the mission, and how it will support the plan of the association. These are important. It certainly, um, just want to mention, it's not an event that takes place once and ends. It's ongoing. Keeping your organization viable with information that is received from headquarters. Get a time frame and commitment on when we need to do things and how we're going to do it. And the vision is so important. You just have to be the best of me to my association. So future plans. Have a plan in mind. Begin the moment you are elected to office. Focus on your resources, which are the members. Build on their strengths. Make sure you work everybody to benefit themselves as well. Don't give them something they really, you're just uh, lining them up for disaster. Give them something they can succeed. Okay, suggestion planning provides opportunities. You need to assess members' feelings. That's always important. Remedy any past problems we may have had and plot successful future courses. Developing future leaders, create a comfortable environment, which is very comfortable here. We do have a comfortable environment. We meet uh, and we talk and we have um, short stories. We meet people as we go through our day-to-day -day stuff with um, vendors coming to visit, showing us their products and their services. This is a great opportunity when you come to these meetings. I know sometimes our jobs take precedence, but when you can make it, this is the opportunity to grow, to learn. Delegate and relinquish power to other members. Relinquishing will multiply members' strengths. Delegate, delegating builds confidence and encourages members to take risks. There's always that feeling about, ah, I really don't want to let go yet, but I know in my heart that this is the right thing to do. I can understand that. We have built so much through the past years. We don't want to see it fail. Well, let it fail because it's going to get better the next time around. We have some people that may not be thinking along the same lines, and that's because we didn't mentor them right. We should have told them all the experiences and knowledge that we had going through a certain uh, position that we held and make them aware that this could happen. If it doesn't happen, trouble. But if it does, don't fret. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and continue on. This is how we develop our future leaders, by making them feel they can do it and also showing them the way. Some of the pitfalls again, lack of leadership, no communication, lack of understanding, and making assumptions about future growth. We all make assumptions, but sometimes it's good to just keep it up here until you can develop a plan. 
This is mentoring. I just want to highlight a little bit about mentoring. It's structured, trusting relationship. Support counsel, being friendly, reinforce, and constructive examples. Our good listeners who want to help individuals develop? Yes. Many people who come to you and want you to tell them about the position that they possibly are considering really want to be there, but there's fear. There's always fear, and there will be always fear, even after they take office. But they're there, you're there to help them by giving them the tools that they need to make themselves successful. Again, about mentoring, deliberate. Deliberate learning is a cornerstone of failure and success of powerful teachers. Leaders need to tell their stories. Development matures over time, and mentoring is a joint venture. Not only you mentor them, there are others that can help. And also, let's hear what they have done. Many times it may not be according to how you delivered it, but shocks, if they arrive at the same results, do it. Chapters need to provide leadership, and we do. Successful mentoring must be developed and managed. It's all, it's an important responsibility for all of us. There's no magic recipe, mentoring grows and evolves. We all know that. So mentor and mentee share responsibility and move forward together. A mentor must coach, guide, redirect, and teach, discourage, complaints, encourage, solutions, criticize, privately, praise, publicly. I hope you're doing that in your offices right now. Criticize, privately, encourage, publicly. That is so important. You have something to say and you're angry, that is step away before you deliver a wrongful message. Not so much what you said, it's how you say it that makes an employee feel this small. And that's what you don't want to do. They'll remember it through time. They'll never forget it. And that's what you don't want to do with your employees. You have something to say, get them in the corner, take them away from everyone else, and tell them in a nice way. No need to yell and scream. Tell them what they did wrong. Tell them what the result should have been. But when they do something right, scream it out. I do at my morning briefings. I let them know when they, when I got a good guest comment, and I want them, everybody to hear. I understand the Filipino culture is very shy. Nobody wants to take uh, uh, good advice. Nobody wants to hear about themselves being so great. But nevertheless, we're in America, and I will shout it at the steeples that they did very well. It's always good, it's encouraging, and it helps others to want to get there. You should be surprised, others want to also get their names mentioned. Do it as a leader. A mentee must be open to challenges. It's all about us, it's about them too. They must be open to challenges presented to help them grow. Two, to help develop and motivate an individual, we have development plan, a focus and individualized approach to determine needs, member of excellence criteria. Although we don't have that with IHA, we do have that with IAAP. There are some criteria we need to do, like attend seminars, give speeches, attend all meetings, um, have in your development plan with your company, a focus on a certain area, like my area this past year was excelling in my job. We should, Rose, we should possibly consider a member of excellence criteria. At the end of a, uh, June 30th, we send our information in and our headquarters in IAAP will send us back a grading. And uh, yeah, I've been on the member of excellence for the past four years because the criteria was easy to attain. We should have that for our members so they can feel there's an award at the end. Many times we give so much, but we should need some recognition for what we do. Yeah. 
Forward thinking, ongoing discussion, continuous evaluation, and leaving a legacy. I talked to about the legacy earlier. You will be leaving a legacy. Many of you who have been in your companies for years, people will remember some of the things you do, some of the things you, you did and they didn't like, but more importantly is what you hope to instill in them to be a professional in their job. Good leaders must first become good servants. I think uh, Rose and I can attest to that. When we first started uh, in the chapter, Hawaii chapter, many years ago, Rose was the one who got me to join. I was not a housekeeper at the time. I was the senior assistant manager at the Kahala. And she said, you should join. I know it's not part of your job. You should join. Well, got me in. I said to my boss, I think I need to move to housekeeping. He went, what? Yeah, I need to go to housekeeping. So the next opportunity came around. He didn't make me the assistant, though. He put me as executive housekeeper, and I went, oh, my God. I know nothing. I really didn't know anything about housekeeping. But fortunate for me, education was provided, and so I was able to go to the Washington, D.C. Hilton, learn from that housekeeper, ended up in Montreal, learning from that housekeeper, and last but not least, I was sent to Japan to learn about housekeeping in Japan. So I was fortunate, I was in the right place at the right time, and so that's how I got my beginning. I did not know anything about cleaning, much less chemicals, much less safety, any of that. But I remember what he said, it's not what you know. It's in your future that I know you can become a good leader. We need you to develop that department and we'll help you along the way. And I am so, so grateful. I wanted to be uh, with the big guys, the corporate office. That's why I went into business administration. I was gonna be up there in a glamorous position. But I am so happy because housekeeping is now a glamorous position for me. <laughs> <coughs> Responsibilities leave tracks. Pave the way for those who will follow. Leave things better than you found them. Make things easier for those who will follow and share lessons learned. Stories, lessons, same thing. Here are some thoughts. Have you ever seen a, a leader who was not energetic, who was like complacent? Who follows them? Nobody. So you need to be energetic, inspired. Leaders foster collaboration. Get together, share thoughts, share best practices. Leaders can make a positive difference in someone's life. Definitely. If you are a true leader, you will want someone to follow. This is Rosalind Carter's, I like this. A leader takes people where they want to go. A great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. That's you. Sometimes people don't think they want to go there. You have to encourage them to step out of their box, their comfort zone, and go. In closing, leaders develop a vision, which is what we are today. We have a vision for moving members forward. We want more members. Uh, John and uh, Rose brought up the fact that we had a lot of uh, people interested in IHA. We want more members. We want as many as would like to join us. And succession planning begins the moment you are elected. Remember that. When you are elected, you set your goals. Mentoring new leaders who make your succession planning a success. You're no good if you don't share. Period. All right. Any questions? You can see I'm really spiked about this. I've done this before, and uh, all I did was redevelop really it to make it work for my own uh, workplace. And I'm so proud of my ladies because they have gone through this with me, and they understand. I see great results. I see people like Carmen wouldn't get out of her box, and now I can be there and say, Carmen, we have a problem. And, uh, she's on it. She's on it, and she follows through. 
Writing is, is still a challenge, but she manages to get the words on paper that I can understand. I'm good with that. But I see people that have been out the Aston for over 40 years, and I am so proud of them. I really am, because you see yourself in them. And when you have seen yourself in them, you have succeeded. So any other questions? If not, I might ask you and ask something about the chapter. For those of you who don't know, IEHA, although it's a good idea for us to start it at the chapter level, do have awards to the members who achieve a lot. One of them is the Bill Joyner Award. They always have a, a, a award to someone in, in the association who has achieved in many areas as well. I'm proud to say that I did receive that Bill Joyner's Award a few years ago. The other award uh, is, uh, is the Diamond Award. They used to call it the Diamond Award. Uh, it's the Margaret, uh, uh, the Margaret Barnes Award today. Uh, and uh, years ago when it first opened, or when they first started it, uh, this was in the, uh, in the 80s, uh, I received that award as well because I was very active with the association. And the association in that, you know, she's been active as well. You know, I was at the, uh, not only the chapter level, I was at the district level and the national level as well. I did, I did what I did because I didn't go to college like Madeline has, and I don't have a degree. And I thought, how can I learn better? And, and, you know, raising a family and all of that didn't make it possible for me to go to Lloyd. I feel now I can challenge anybody who has a degree. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, learning through the hard way you know, was, was the best way. And I think even how can vouch for that as well. So actually, those of you who are members, there's, there's an, uh, a way that you can you know, reach for these, these kinds of awards. And I know Madden has had local awards as well, too. And it's because of the involvement that we do. There's, you know, somebody wrote to me once, and I, I have it in a poem. I won't recite the whole poem. Somebody wrote to me once and said, no, how do you do so much? My answer was, and it's in the point, how do you do so little? And, you know, actually, it's a part of process. Madeline, you heard all of what Colleen read, all of her experiences, all of what she built herself to be. You know, I do the same thing. She has a busy schedule, I have a busy schedule. Uh, but I try to, and I believe in what is called the balanced life. And just to give you an indication, my Monday to Friday, is to the association, is to my business, to my work, and everything. Saturday is devoted to the men up there. Now, every Saturday, I'm at the chapel. I, I give to the chapel one to two hours. Every Sunday, I'm at 6.30 mass. Mm -hmm. For 20 plus years, I, in order to learn and to know how to read in front of people, until today and tomorrow, I, 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 I'm scheduled to do so, I lecture to the congregation. I do read this. And I've done it for 20 plus years. I promised myself to do these kinds of things. When my husband died, I pledged. That's why I go to the chapel now when he died. I, because uh, I, I just spent a lot of time with him in church. I said to myself, that's where I'll, I'll get back. And you know, those kinds of things are important. There's family, you know, there's other things, your, your private life as well. Madeline's, Madeline's cool, like you said, I used to take cool before. You know, but I should <laughs> come back. Well, actually, <laughs> we need to cool now. I came to the 1976 I learned uh, in, uh, I don't you know, summer fun when I was young. In 1976, when I went to the convention, it was two of us, Pat Burkett and I were the first to the convention. They said, Rose, you come from Hawaii. Hawaii people know how to do the hula. I said, sure. I learned lovely hula hands. <laughs> so they played lovely hula hands. This guy who was in Hawaii before brought the record, played, oh, I did my lovely hula hands. Grateful as a bird, you know? and all of that, and the ocean and all of that, you know, and the houses. Because in, 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 in <laughs> women in Hawaii, see, I'm from the big island, so we know, you know, we know pigeon talk, you know, and, and we used to say, we're not, we used to say, uh, instead of going, we're going to go to the beach and go to the ocean, we said, we're going to see beach. Okay, that's how the big island used to talk, you know. So when I got into the, when I got into the board, I forgot myself sometimes because I come from Hawaii. The board members, all of them from different colleges, and I would say, oh, pass me the kind. And they look at me, what are you talking about, Rose? And then when the meeting's finished, I say, oh, how? <laughs> but I ended up teaching them Hawaii. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.